Module 8.1 Concavity and Inflection Points Objective 1. Given a graph, determine open intervals of concavity and inflection points. Objective 2. Given a function, determine open intervals of concavity and inflection points. Objective 1. Given a graph, find open intervals of concavity and determine inflection points. Concavity is when a function has a parabolic shape whether it be concave up, in this case, or concave down, in this case. So if you look, we can see that this function, as it goes from left to right, is concave upward. But somewhere here in the middle, it's going to change from going concave upward to concave downward. Okay, This point in here is called an inflection point. So this is an inflection point, and that is when something ceases to be concave upward and begins to be concave downward, or vice versa. Objective 2. Given a function, find open intervals of concavity and determine inflection points. In our first example, we're given a polynomial. What we need to know is that we can find inflection points only when the double derivative of a function is either equal to zero or is discontinuous. Okay, if that's the case, let's go through and let's find the second derivative of this function so we can find this inflection point. Okay, so our first derivative is going to be negative 4x to the third power plus 108x squared minus 36. Okay, that's our first derivative. And our second derivative would be the derivative of that, which would be negative 12x squared plus 216x. And then obviously the 36 goes away. To find our inflection point, we need to find places where f double prime of x or the second derivative is either equal to 0 or is discontinuous. So what we need to do, since this is a polynomial, we don't have to worry about discontinuity. So we're going to take negative 12x squared plus 216x and set it equal to 0 since it's only hope finding an inflection point. So let's, do, let's factor out a negative 12x, and that would leave me with a positive x. Minus 18 is equal to 0. Separate them, so minus 12x is equal to 0. And x minus 18 is equal to 0. So this one would be x is equal to 0 would be one possible point, and we're going to add 18 to both sides here, and this would give us another point. So now we can partition off a number line, number line going in both directions. We've got from negative infinity all the way up to zero, and we've got it up to 18. And so now we've got three regions. We've got region one here, two here, and three here. Okay, so we need to do some test points and find out exactly what's going on with the double derivative. So in area 1, let's pick a number that is negative, so that would be in region 1. Now remember, our double derivative is the negative 12x squared plus 216x. So if I put a negative in, that would be a negative 12, let's, let's put in a negative 1. Negative 1 squared plus 216 times negative 1. Notice that this number is going to end up giving me a negative, and that number is going to be a negative, and a negative plus a negative is going to give me a negative. So we're going to have a negative double derivative in region 1. All right, let's pick a number like 5, and let's try it in region 2. So in region 2, let's try 5, which would be negative 12 times 5 squared plus 216 times 5. All right, so it would be negative 12 times 25 plus 216 times 5 would be 1080. 12 times 25 would be negative 300 plus the 1080. And so we can see that this is going to give me a positive number. Okay, in region 3, let's pick, in region 3, let's pick a number like 20. Okay, so that would be in region 3, that would be negative 12 times 20, quantity squared, plus 216 times 20. This would give us negative 4,800 here, plus 
plus, and if we multiply 216 times 20, we're going to get 4320. So you can see this is going to be a negative. All right, now, remember that we're dealing with our double derivative. Here, we have a sign change from region 1 to region 2. And from region 2 to region 3, we have a sign change. Okay, if we have a sign change, that means it is indeed an inflection point at 0. And since we have a sign change at 18, we indeed have an inflection point at 18. If it goes from negative to positive, like it does from region 1 to 2, then we are dealing with an open interval of concavity. If the double derivative is greater than 0, then we deal with concave upward. If the double derivative is less than 0, then we deal with concave downward. So you can see we are dealing with concave up between 0 and 18, and we are dealing with concave down from negative infinity all the way to 0, union with 18 all the way to infinity. In example 2, we are given a rational function, and we need to find open intervals of concavity upward or concavity downward and inflection points if they exist. We need to find the double derivative in order to find the possible inflection points of this function. So first let's rewrite the function so that we can easily take the derivative. We're going to bring the x minus 1 up so this is going to become negative 9 times x minus 1 to the negative first power using our exponent rules. Our first derivative will be equal to 9 times x minus 1 to the negative second power times the inside, which is 1, so that would not change that. Our second derivative would be equal to, that would be negative 18, x minus 1, subtract 1 from the top power, would be negative 3 times the inside, which is 1, so that would leave this unchanged. So this is going to be equal to negative 18 over x minus 1 quantity cubed. So here is our double derivative. If we remember our rational functions, we can remember that we've got to watch out for the domain with any issues that we might have, issues or restrictions that we might have with the denominator. Notice in this case, x cannot be equal to 1. The problem is, the only place where this double derivative would be equal to 0 or undefined would be at x equals 1, and that's when it is undefined. So what we're going to end up with is we're going to have a number line with x is equal to 1 on this. We know that it can't be equal to 1, so this will not have an inflection point because the only place that it could be 0 or, dis or discontinuous would be at the x equal 1. So this will have no inflection point because the only place that we could have a point of inflection is at 1, and we can see from the function it is discontinuous. So that gets us two regions. We have region 1 and region 2 that we need to check for concavity. So let's take a, let's take a number in region 1. Let's say the number 0, which would be over here somewhere, and we're going to plug it into the double derivative. So if we plug 0 into the double derivative, remember our double derivative is here, so that would be negative 18 over... 0 minus 1 quantity cubed, which would be negative 18 over negative 1 quantity cubed, which would be negative 18 over negative 1, which is 18. Notice that this is positive. So we know that we're dealing with concavity upward from negative infinity all the way to 1, where 1 is not included, right? Okay, let's try region 2. Let's pick a point like 2. So that would be I'll get it back into my double derivative. It would be negative 18 over 2 minus 1 to the third power, which is negative 18 over 1 cubed, which will give us a negative number. So here we're dealing with concave downward in region 2. That is from 1 to infinity. From negative infinity all the way up to 1, we are dealing with concave upward. And from 1 to infinity, we're dealing with concave 
downward. And this one has no inflection point. Example three, we're given a function that has two things being multiplied together. So we're going to have to use the product rule. So that is uv prime plus u prime v. And we're also going to have to use the chain rule. We need to find intervals of concavity. And we need to find, to find the, an inflection point if it exists. Okay. First of all, we need to kind of be careful in this function because we do have a restriction in the domain. 5x must be greater than 0. So therefore, if we divide by 5 on both sides, so we now know that x must be greater than 0. So this is an important thing to kind of keep in mind as we go through and we're looking for our inflection points. Okay. So first, let's take the first derivative of this function. And that would give us u, which is 7x squared, times the derivative of v, which is 1 over 5x, times the derivative of the inside, which is 5, plus, we're going to do the derivative of the first one, which is 14x, times the second one, which is the natural log of 5x. Okay, let's do some combining here. So notice that the 5s will cancel here, and we'll get rid of one of these x's right here. So that'll leave us with 1x with the 7 plus 14x times the natural log of 5x. All right? And so now we have the first derivative. Okay, so now let's go for the second derivative. This will give us, easy enough in the beginning, will give us 7 plus, and here we go with the, the uh, product rule again. So we're going to take the first one, which is 14x, times the derivative of the second one, which is 1 over 5x, times the derivative of the inside, which is 5, plus. So we're going to take the derivative of the first one, which is 14, times the second one, which is the natural log of 5x. And so cleaning this up, we'll see that here, once again, the 5s cancel. And this time, the x's will totally cancel. So it'll give us 7 plus 14 plus 14 times the natural log of 5x. And so this will give us 21 plus 14 times the natural log of 5x. All right. So we've got our double derivative now. We need to first realize that our domain required us that x be greater than 0. And everywhere else, this function is going to be continuous. So we need to look at places where it would be equal to 0. So let's set 21 plus 14 times the natural log of 5x equal to 0. So we're going to subtract 21 from both sides. So that will give me 14 times the natural log of 5x is equal to negative 21. So we're going to divide by 14 on both sides. So that will give me the natural log of 5x is equal to negative 3 halves. We're going to take both sides and lift them so we have e to the power of natural log of 5x is equal to e to the negative 3 halves. And so that would give us 5x is equal to e to the negative 3 halves. And we can divide both sides by 5, which will give us x is equal to e to the negative 3 halves over 5. We can rewrite this as 1 over 5 e to the positive 3 halves using our power rule. We now know that this is going to be a point of interest for us. So let's break out the number line. We're going to set up an interval. We know that this function is going to be greater than 0. So it's from 0 to 1 over 5 e to the 3 halves, and then from that point to 0. So we've got or that point to infinity. So we've got our two regions. So now let's test some points in here. Now remember, that 1 over 5e to the 3 halves is approximately equal to 0 0.045. So our first test point that we're going to put in here 
is going to be 0 0.04. We'll plug it into the function, into the double derivative. And so that would be 21 plus 14 times the natural log of 5 times, let's try 0 0.04 would be a point in region 1. And we're going to find that this is going to give us a negative 1.53. And we plug that in our calculator. And so in region one, we have an area that has a negative double derivative. All right, let's try region two. If we plug in, let's say plug in two. So we got 21 plus 14 times the natural log of five times two. And so in this case, we would end up with something just a little bigger than 53. And so that would give us a positive double derivative. In the region from 0 to 1 over 5 e to the 3 halves, we are dealing with concave downward. And in the region from 1 over 5 e to the 3 halves to infinity, we're dealing with concave upward. So there's one last thing to do. We need to find this inflection point. Now we have the x value of this inflection point. All we need to do is plug it back into the function and find our y value, and we'll have our inflection point. Okay. So let's start off. We have 7 times 1 over 5e to the 3 halves quantity squared times the natural log of 5, 1 over 5e to the 3 halves. If we square this, that'll give me 7 times 1 over, the 5 squared would be 25. e to the 3 halves squared will just give us e to the third power times the natural log. Notice that the 5s are canceled, which would give us the natural log of 1 over e to the 3 halves. Notice that this first one will give us 7 over 25 e to the third times, and the second one would give us the natural log of e to the negative 3 halves, and remember that one of our rules, one of our identities in natural logs was that if you have the natural log of e, that those would just kind of cancel out, and that would give us 7 over 25 e to the third power times negative 3 over 2, which would give us negative 21 over 25 times 2, which would be 50 e to the third power. And so our inflection point would be 1 over 5 e to the 3 halves, comma, negative 21 over 50 e to the third.